A very warm evening to everyone. Presentations of post-colonialism in English, New Orient uh, Orientations, edited by Professor Joydeep Sarangi. We have gathered today to have the virtual release and a discussion on a book which I think offers a lot on the platter. This is a book which talks about New Europe and its cultures. It talks about the voices of margins and minority. It talks about Tibetan poetry. It talks about poetry of resistance from Nigeria and raises the very pertinent questions of new Englishes that has come up you know, beyond England in that way. It also raises you know, issues of value education. In times like ours, this edition, I believe, uh, is just not going to open our minds to a lot of things that this very broad term, post-colonialism. So welcome you all to this wonderful venture. And now I would request Professor Shutanaka Roy to give the introductory address. Thank you, uh, Shutul Kanadi, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, Tagore is a world poet. You know, as Bengalis, we find almost unable, you know, to express ourselves, you know, in all our emotions without him. So I would now request Shutapa Bhattacharya to render a song for us. Namaskar. In this auspicious occasion, I greet you all with a song written by Rabindranath Thakur. Mm -hmm. 
presentation of the English translation of the lyrics done by Mr. Anjan Ganguly. As I think many of our learned friends may have some difficulties to access the theme of the Bengali language. Here the translation goes. Sounded is the call in bus pleasantly over the morning sky. Song of peace continues to play from all directions of the temple of earth. Look at the handsome in your coat, the eternal friend in the entire world. Come, join the fanfare wishfully dressed in peace. All evils may be cleaned off, all confrontations disappear. For all good actions, let all of vanish from the mind. Swing your voice for an avian song, collaborate in all directions in the world that is blessed with the holy hymn of perpetual unity. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shutava Bhattacharya, for that wonderful renderation. 
and thoughtfully adding the translation. I think it brings out another aspect of post-colonialism where, of course, you know, we are also talking about translations, you know, of, of knowing or coming to know about various cultures and language, about their depth and their richness. So, you know, one of the lines of the translations which came, as you know, which Shutopa rightly mentioned, come join the fanfare. So we welcome you all to this to this fanfare. And now I would request the editor, uh, Joydeep Sarangi, to please give us the welcome address. Thank you, Modimita. It's a pristine evening from the city of joy to all my soul makers and all uh, life forces who are present in this virtual meet. I thank the publisher, Sudarshan Kateri, who is almost my elder brother, anchor in New Delhi. Thank you, Sudarshan Ji, for taking care of the book and publishing it with elegance and, uh, of course, with a beautiful uh, uh, way of uh, presentation in the days of social distancing. I thank uh, Professor Fakrul Alam, Fakrul Da, uh, uh, for giving time and uh, going through the book and taking pains to that and uh, addressing the learned audience today and uh, looking forward to your observations, suggestions, and guidance, Fakrul Da. No word is sufficient from Malishradi because every day I learn a lot of things. Malashruti, and uh, she is a constant source of inspiration for me, my works, and many body scholars, established scholars who are working honestly and uh, who are committed to literature and learning. I must thank Professor Alessandro Monti, who is a contributor to the book and who could not join today because of some health issues and also. Recently, he had been to France and uh, he couldn't join. He has expressed his inability and he's expressed uh, his uh, best wishes for the book. And all the panelists will be uh, talking today. I convey his concern and love to all of us. I thank Professor Prestige Austin of University of Yesov, who is the constant link between India and Poland who has worked on Indian writing and he teaches and, and also supervises scholars on Indian writing in English in Poland. And uh, thank you, Patricia, for your time, concern, love for India, especially to Kolkata. And Kolkata remains grateful to you. Thank you, my long-term friend, uh, Rajesh Makwanaji from Gujarat. And uh, thanks to him for giving time and uh, coming out within a very short period of time that he is the great to talk for all, for all of us today. Thanks to coordinators Madhumita Majumdar and our Shutanuka Ghoshraidi for your relentless support and Bashudara for all technical uh, support for the day. Post-colonialism is a subject that we all discuss and possibly we'll be discussing some more years to come because I think uh, as long as there is a hangover of colonial, post colonial will stay. And uh, there will be debate, debates and discussions about different parameters and contexts. Some of the parameters and contexts are taken care of in this book. I know that the book is not definite. But it is a humble attempt to cover some of the evident or pertinent issues of post-colonial discourse, like Tibetan issues, issues of uh, refugee, issues of Dalit status, issues of uh, issue of new poetry, issues of technology and post-colonialism, and uh, rise of new Englishes new conception of literary perceptions and marginal studies, different angles to look at post-colonial theories and praxis, 
and the book i again repeat is not definite but of course will show some directions uh, in this lengthy book of around 400 pages to uh, where all uh, diff contributors from different parts of the globe have contributed and i think they have expressed their concern about post colonialism and they have explored the subject of post colonialism from different angles from africa maybe from spain and from australia and as a whole we will have a journey towards a knowledge friendly world where new spaces will determine our values our ways of thinking whether it may be post colonial after 50 years or not post post colonial after 50 years or just a study not a post colonial or colonial study so all looking forward to the constructive criticism guidance for a new revision if possible for the next updated edition of the book i remain grateful to all virtual friends today who have joined from different parts and different time zones of the world i thank you all from the core of my heart that this flows through you thank you all thank you thank you to the coordinators back to the coordinators again thank you thank you uh thank you radhibda for that uh, yeah. introduction and setting the ball rolling we too we are you know lucky to be in august company today we would hear uh, more on post colonialism and other pertinent issues a book is a work of labor but then to be fulfilling that you know vision one needs you know a person who is able to not only support but empathize and also understand that this is a book that needs to go to the readers and such a person is the publisher i would now request sudarshan hrd g who has himself you know become a name synonymous with such efforts to be delivering a few words so good evening uh, malashri madam and pa uh, panelists friends little dumnis and the coordinator madhubita ji vasundhara ji sudhakant ji and all it is my privilege to take part in this in the release function of presentations of post uh, post colonialism in english new orientations by dr jaydeep sarangi on behalf of others present i would like to express my warm welcome to you all presentations of post colonialism in english new orientations provides interesting and insightful insightful explorations of textuality and intertextuality of the post colonial discourse its meaning in recent critical practice for more than a quarter of a century english literature has been subjected to sustained critical scrutiny by scholars working in the fields of cultural and post colonial studies a massive critical literature has developed exploring the english languages investment in post colonial discourse and global inequalities many scholars have made explicit use of cultural and post po post colonial framework to analyze english power knowledge relations historically and globally in literature english continues to be a major identity space in global modernity in india a significant terrain on which privilege desire and discrimination are written and negotiated professor sarangi's book is a remarkable work which deals with the presentations and new orientations of post colonialism my sincere congratulations to the editor and to the contributors of presentation of post colonialism english new orientations so the bond between others press and professor sarangi ji is as old as the age of others press since its inception others press is blessed and fortunate to have immeasurable engagement from professor sarangi ji not only as an author but as a friend guide and an ambassador for authors press my sincere appreciation regards to professor sarangi ji my younger brother i wish him all the success for his future ventures last but not the least i would like to thank the eminent and distinguished participants gathered in this dg centric platform to make the event resounding success thank you all thank you sudarshan ji for those wonderful words uh we have come together in times difficult as this for a book release so 
uh, we will have a different kind of a book release and this would be a virtual one uh, i would now request uh, uh, joydeep sarangi the editor uh, and others please to join in this virtual release of this book malushridi i think uh, the think, copies uh, have not reached everyone so sudarshan ji uh, so all of you yeah. yes yes okay. mm. Thank you. Sudarshan ji, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Already I conveyed uh, uh, about this uh, book. Yes, obviously we are entering this uh, digicentric arena. The importance of this book is uh, something beyond expression. I already conveyed as an author, an editor of this book, Professor Sarang ji, already conveyed this is not the absolute or complete. This is a beginning. How the colonialist uh, ruled and uh, uh, ruined uh, uh, the existing and the existed uh, treasure of our india indian heritage and culture yeah so okay uh, so after that uh, official book release since as i had said we are in august company we just cannot be going without hearing words uh, of wisdom and about post colonialism for our guests i would begin with professor fakrul alam an academic critic translator uh, from bangladesh a well known name to please say a few words uh, thank you very much mudhubita uh, and uh, thank you also joydi uh, for inviting me to this event uh, uh, like also like to thank the others involved and let's like to say uh, that it's a delight to be in the same panel as malashri d and and the others i have met before but I, i'm very happy to be here and part of this event uh, the 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 covid covid 19 has brought all kinds of new things uh, as i was saying before we started to join it that you know i'm busy i never thought i would be so busy but every day there are you know meetings interviews selection boards they are happening all the time and uh, classes virtual classes and but this is the first for me a virtual book release and uh, so i'm very happy to be part of this virtual book release um joydi expected me to say something about the whole book i'll confess only the first 12 chapters i haven't been able to go through all of the book uh, but from what i've seen but from what i've read in the book uh, let me just say that i'm amazed and impressed with the range i mean i've looked at the table of contents i've read the jaydeep's introduction so i have a sense of what the other chapters have and uh, you know it, it 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 is such a you know diverse i wanted to use the word dazzling almost but you know it is really amazing how you managed to jaydeep you managed to bring in so many different themes now i speak as somebody who has been doing post colonialism for a long time it was a, it was in 1980 i was a doctoral student at the university of british columbia and i came across a copy of orientalism and i brought that copy and it changed me completely uh, from that point of view you know i chose my doctoral dissertation a topic i i i, I chose daniel defo and colonial propaganda and i never looked back uh, but i think malasiddi and uh, i are first generation post colonialists uh, in, in i don't know whether she like me to be so not but i think we are first generation post uh, uh, colonialists and things have changed quite a bit since then and i can't say i've kept up with everything certainly joydeep's book what i read and uh, his introduction tells me that i have some catching up to do because in the last 10 years i moved away to other things and stop you know doing a, a post colonial criticism like it did before and i think it's one of the things that you can say about joydeep's book is that he hasn't missed anything even the last 10 years you know which i haven't uh, you know been awkward about i haven't kept up with i i i realize that there are things here that I can pick up and that can be of uh, good use uh, to me before so you know as a first generation um, post colonialist we read we talked about i wrote about um the colonial encounter i wrote about representations of uh, colonization uh, in, in 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 certain works and then um, i began to also look at 
and studied um, the impact, especially through the English language, of the colonial encounter on writers, novelists, thinkers in our part of the world, and uh, the resistance too. So it was basically resistance and re representations for us first generations working. And then I think uh, a, a new train began with Viva and, and Baba. And, and the rest, so we had these uh, new ideas about subaltern, about the subaltern uh, issues that came up, the, ma the marginalizing and hybridity and mimicry and so on. And uh, we read about settler colonies and what was also happening in Australia and Canada and, and, and other New Zealand and other parts of the world. And eventually we had diaspora and other issues that came up. But now we have so much more. Joyadeep's book seems to bring in uh, all kinds of uh, new issues about representations of colonialism uh, in, 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 uh, in, 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 in uh, post-colonialism. So I think it's one of the great things about his book that we are now being introduced to the third wave. We have it you know, in, in a convenient package in, in one book. And 400 pages, uh, I think, is a lot for all of us, us to explore. As I think uh, one of them, uh, Sudhir Arora, says that it's a hydra-headed monster, uh, not monster, hydra-headed uh, you know, uh, th thing. And so we are beginning, uh, we, are, we can grasp something of that. I also like the phrase that uh, Sudhir Arora uses of the post-past colonization. That was a new one for me. And I, and, 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 and I was amused and amazed at um, the way uh, he, you know we had this idea coming out, and uh, we saw other issues. I, I you know the diaspora issue, uh, the, the, the uh, wanting to come back, the longing to come back. I wrote uh, some years ago, ten years ago, the mythos of return. So diasporics who have their, uh, 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 their, their eyes set, and so we have read about. That I was also interested in the way uh, this anthology brings in uh, Ireland and uh, brings in um, uh, or resistance from uh, in Nigerian poetry. So there was there was there, there were a lot of things that I could pick up from my uh, reading. So uh, you know I also began to reread things. The rethink things that I had read before, uh, Raja Rao and Arkanaran, even though I didn't quite agree with the uh, with, with, with the discussion on Arkanaran, uh, which seemed to uh, make him a kind of a quietist, uh, you know, response uh, uh, in a colonized mind. And I've always resisted that and I've written against that because I think Arkanaran is somebody who registers the changes and. Uh, it's there in a subterranean way. It welcomes it. So it's not that I've agreed with everything that I've read. I think I think I've had uh, my differences with many of the things uh, that I've uh, that I've read here. But uh, it's it's amazing what the, what what you know what this reading this book, the twelve chapters that I've read, has done. It has made me realize that there's much more to read. So I've been and I certainly look forward to reading the rest of the books, uh, rest of the book, and. Uh, and uh, and uh, you know exploring the ideas that came up uh, that, that that was the ideas that have come up in uh, this book and uh, I would like to say uh, by way of summing up that there seems to be plenty here there seems to be plenty and uh, Jadi has cast a wide you know his nest wide and he's managed to bring in so many different uh, you know, voices and has given us so much to think. Uh, personally, I was very interested in the translation parts of the book. Uh, lately, I've been uh, in, in, involved in uh, translation and I'm, I seem to get more and more involved in translation all the time. Uh, it, 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 I've also profited from uh, thinking about the minorities. Uh, you know, there, there, there are quite a few uh, pages on Dalits. Uh, but I was thinking of minorities in our part of the world as we pay uh, more and more attention to them because we have uh, obviously marginalized them and neglected them. And there has been uh, a kind of new colonization here. And these ideas come up in this book again and again, new colonization. 
you know, the, and, and the need to rethink our, ourselves, those of us who are post-colonials, but in a, I think in an age of innocence, thinking that this was something that happened before, uh, you know, in, in past history, and that this was something that happened there in, in Europe or Europeans in our part of the world. But the idea of new colonization, the idea that post-colonial ideas apply to our part of the world, I think this is what uh, Joyce's book dramatizes, highlights in all kinds of ways. Uh, so there seems to be a lot. I look forward to reading the, uh, the essay on value education. Uh, it seems very intriguing to me, and it's something that I will uh, certainly explore. So let me conclude by saying that it was a pleasure it was a privilege looking at uh, the, uh, the soft copy of the book. And I'm sorry that I didn't read the rest of it, but I know from what I've read that I'll profit from the rest of it. Uh, it will be a good addition to my library of post -colonialism. And I look forward not to the virtual copy. I look forward to the print copy so that I can have it on the shelf with others. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh Professor Fakrul Alam, that was, you know, yeah. enriching, you know, uh, this is what a discussion should do to us, you know, it should tell us, you know, how to respond to the book, you know, of course, his, uh, you know, sir had said that he did not have the time to look, go through the whole book, but that is what an experienced eye is all about. He the way he talked about Ark and Narayan, the way he brought up the issues of the subaltern, the diasporic, the resistance, everything coming together. So it gives us, you know, the hint of what this book can actually do to our, you know, responses to our thinking. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure now to welcome Professor Malushi Lal, uh, who is herself an academic and critic in her own right, and of course, a well-known name, Madam. Thank you very much, Madhumita. It's a great pleasure to be talking about this book, Joydeep and Fakrul. It's really a, a great privilege to be on the same panel with you. And we're glad that you're talking about different generations of post-colonialists, if I may put it that way. So indeed, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Joydeep and all the contributors to the book on an absolutely diverse and wonderful, uh, magnificent variety of approaches to the post-colonial. And uh, it made me uh, think that we really not past the post. So that term keeps coming up, seem to need periodic reminders uh, that uh, we have a lot of way to go. And uh, there are many new ways of looking at the post-colonial. So these 27 essays in the book have uh, made me think a new on several topics, as Fakhul said. And uh, most of all, it has brought home to me the plurality of Indian writing in English and the regional languages, and how post-colonialism takes on new meanings when one goes into it in some detail. So uh, let me focus on three areas that are of special interest to me. Uh, one is the questioning of post-colonial theory is it a necessary framework for all of us even today, particularly if you are going into grassroots and uh, looking at grassroots uh, understanding? Second, um, as always, the gender question interests me. Do we need to look at it in a very special way when we are talking about post-colonial discourse? And third, and this is a new aspect, and I'm sorry, so has pointed this out, uh, what is the role of media in revisiting post-colonial? So, uh, briefly on these three aspects, when we are questioning post-colonial, one may begin to wonder that the generation that we read, as Sakhar reminded us, Salman Rushdie, Edward Taid, Homi Bhava, what has happened after that? And the book brought home to me is the territory in which the answers are to be found. Uh, Joy Deep in his uh, very impressive preface talks about the textuality and the intertextuality. And that is extremely important, particularly the intertextuality that is through translations. And Fakrul said this is really a new area of emphasis that we are all looking into. And the more I too look at translation sites as places of conversation and debate, the more post-colonial opens up to me 
is possibly the need for a different approach than what has come to us in the so-called masters of post-colonial theory. So, for instance, I was reminded of even our former president, Sri Pranob Mukherjee's uh, talking about the journey that he has made, as he says, from the flicker of a lamp in a small Bengal village to the chandeliers of Delhi. Now, this is also an internal migration, migration. which we have to look at from the post-colonial angle. So it's no imaginary homeland of the diasporic writers, but we have to talk about the remembered villages that our writers are carrying within their own psyche and looking at it anew. And I'm not at all sure that Western theories of post-colonialism can help us to understand this kind of thing and grassroots material. Yeah, yeah. One of the essays which I thoroughly enjoyed, yeah, enjoyed on was uh, Malti Mathur's Politics of Correctness, India and Translation, where she yeah. talks of the, the new post-colonialism yeah. as a walk through yeah. a yeah. Yeah. and how every post-colonial yeah. critic today will have to gather her or his own bouquet by picking a sprig here and a blossom there, and then there may be an explosion of color at any yeah. other yeah. Now, talking of active translation, I was very interested in that essay on um, Kathapura and how there's a kind of internal translation that's going on. It seemed to be a, a new approach to Kathapura. And of, of course, from my own writing on Radha and on Sita, I was very interested in the essay which talked to revisiting the mythologies. And that brings about a new kind of awareness of post colonialism. So that brings me briefly now to the uh, gender question, does it deserve emphasis? All of us who work with this area know that post-colonialism and feminism has a very strong alliance in challenging the seats of hegemonic power. So is something new happening in those interpretations? I must say, Joydeep, I thoroughly enjoyed your essay on Rama Mehta's uh, Inside the Haveli, Rajasthan is my home, and uh, going back to Udaipur through your eyes, and looking at Geeta, the protagonist of that novel, uh, and her post-colonial act of breaking into the traditions of the Haveli, winning them over by first infringing into their system and picking up strategies of change. I thought that was very, very insightful and also very strategic. And I talk of strategy because feminists will always talk about strategy. It's not enough to do theory. We have to get into practice. And uh, the example of Geeta, in that novel is one of a moderated feminism, which works well for India. History has shown that, Sarojini and I do onwards, that one has to understand the system and not look for an oppositional politics of man versus woman. And that is precisely the kind of uh, stance that one sees in the gender-oriented essays in this particular book. Uh, the essays on Dalit feminism, particularly the references to Meena Kandasamy and the new writers, of course, reminds us that there is still a great deal of anger that we have to deal with. I enjoyed uh, Basudara Roy's very perceptive essay that uh, we have to look at uh, gender, caste and class. They co-mingle. But there is a new approach where we have to focus on local topography. Once again, the reminder that local and grassroots vision is extremely important for the new post-colonial perspective. There's also another essay, Gajendra Kumar, on the third world woman. I do like the word third world. Maybe our new post-colonialists will have to find another term for it. Why are we calling ourselves third world? We are the first world looking at post-colonialism through the eyes of Joydeep Sarangi and his uh, magnificent um, contributors. My third and uh, uh, point is really looking into the next volume of Joydeep's book, I believe. And uh, that is because Joydeep says in his preface that post-colonialism is closely allied to social media, technology is an epistemology, etc. Now, if technology is the new epistemology, then what exactly is the post-colonial critic going to do with the media explosion that is happening all around us. Are we going to look at old texts in, in the, through the eyes of new technology? 
And uh, I, in fact, sent a note to John Deep to say, where are the essays on this subject? And he said, they're coming. So I assume there is another volume coming, which would be very worthwhile indeed. But for myself, I began thinking, as I was looking at Meera Nair and BBC's uh, serial, Suitable Boy, which I believe many of you have uh, looked at. Now, the novel is 1993. And at that time, as readers, when we, talked, when we heard about arranged marriages, etc., some of it all seemed very comic, etc. But today, in 2020, and in the midst of the pandemic, somehow I found it very disturbing to see this magnificent uh, social documentation as though time has not moved. Time has moved. And this is now for the post-colonial critics to wonder, OK, who's the audience for this film? I'm not talking of the novel. The audience for that film is possibly non-Indian audiences. Is it for a British audience? Is it for an international audience? And therefore, there are stereotypes which we have to accept. But on the other hand, as a post-colonial reader, both the written word and the visual image, I have to deal with the new technologies and come up with my own understanding of post-colonialism. So for now, I really want to end by saying what a wonderful journey it has been for me, Joydeep, to read your preface, to read your essays, the essays by Gurchudira and all the others. And I have learned a lot. And like Fakrul, I'm deeply uh, indebted to you and the others for bringing me up to date on what's happening with post-colonialism. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for those wonderful words. Uh, we uh, take that, you know, as a kind of, I know, a, a great pleasure, I think, for all the contributors and for the editor. When ma'am said that it is like the first world who are looking at post-colonialism and not, you know, we are so accustomed to you know, calling ourselves the third world. So that is one thing, of course, you know, uh, that is a wonderful uh, comment. Talking about textuality, intertextuality, both Fakrul sir and Malashri ma'am pointed that out very rightly. And of course, you know, the third aspect, you know, the audience, you know, it, when we, uh, definitely take responses we talk about responses but we keep ourselves so you know within uh, the responses of the academia but also now talking about the audiences who are reading it who are watching a particular text and that there cannot be a blanket theory you know so all these you know perhaps are uh, things that will help us you know perhaps you know in future even as we think on those lines now uh, i would now call upon my co-moderator for the day, Shutanuka Ghoshroy, from take it, uh, to take it from here. Thank you, Mothamita. Our next speaker, Professor Alessandro Monti, is not with us today. However, he has sent his good wishes for the program. So we quickly go now to Professor Rajesh Makwan. Hello, hello. Academic. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Carol Warzonelli. And uh, I want to apologize for Alessandro Monti, and um, he can be present today. But um, he told me to speak in his name, uh, so I'm going to say a few words. Can you listen to me? Can you hear me? Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, hello from France. Greetings from France. So. Um, uh, for Alessandro, uh, postcolonial literature is an intercultural literature uh, of uh, diaspora. And uh, by intercultural, uh, uh, Alessandro means that in Indian uh, diaspora, the English cultural heritage is a There is a network issue, I suppose. Yeah, I think uh, she's yeah, yeah. calling from, I think, from France. Yeah, some problem, maybe. Okay, let us wait for one minute or two minutes. Yeah. And let's see. Okay. Or can we pass on to uh, Rajesh Ji? Then we can come back. Okay, okay. okay. So, as I was telling you on the professor. Oh, cheers, John. Cheers, John. Okay. 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 Hello. I've been disconnected, I think. Sorry for that. So, according to Alessandro, uh, post-colonial uh, literature is multicultural and at the same time inter 
culture, culture. because it has because elements it has of the English language uh, modified by the Indian culture. Okay. Uh, in some contemporary Indian English fictions, for example, Alessandra has observed that very often the plots take place in English schools, which date back to the colonial period. And in these schools, they teach Indian students to behave as the English do, and the religion taught is the Christian one. So, according to Alessandro, this is an act of imitation, that is to say, an act of mimicry, which tends to be opposed to the post-colonial mentality. It is a process of late colonial assimilation that wants to erase the post-colonial abrogation and the focus should be on the rise of an Indian upper middle class, which is still divided between English colonial culture and Desh ways of life. As a result, Alessandro thinks that the colonial heritage is still alive in some educational institution in India today. And as a consequence, in post-colonial literature, there is a valorization of cultural identity and the appropriation of colonial heritage, the concept of intercultural literature, of diaspora, is simply the displacement of the English culture into Indian nation and its culture. Well, that's all. Thank you. I, I, I hope you understood what I said because the connection is uh, uh, <laughs> uh, chaotic. Thank you. Thank you so much, please. Thank you very much. Our to Professor Ella Chandramanti. Please come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for that, but uh, he, yeah. thank you. And tell him that he is here eh, in the book also. Eh? Thank you so much. Man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. For, thank, thank you. you thank you so much for those words and wisdom of Alexander Monti. We now quickly go to Professor Rajesh Mapuana, uh, Professor of Central University in Gujarat, Gandhinagar. We are eagerly waiting to hear you, sir. Please unmute yourself and deliver a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am from Gujarat, Gandhinagar Central University, Center for Gujarati Language and Literature Department, I am the head of the department and the professor. My mother tongue is Gujarati and I am the Gujarati language. Then, I am the head of the book. जो दृष्टिकोण है वो इसमें इंगित किया हुआ है वो आपके सामने रखने का प्रयास करूंगा आई वॉन्ट टू थैंक द एडिटर ऑफ द बुक मिस्टर जयदीप सारणी फॉर मेकिंग मी अ पार्ट ऑफ बुक रिलीज ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पॉस्ट कॉनोलियनिज्म इन इंग्लिश न्यू ओरियंटेशन सुप्नु का खोज सुतपा भट्टाचार्य सुदर्शन तेहरी एंड माई फेलो स्पीकर प्रोफेसर फखरुल आलम Professor Malasri Lal, Professor Alessandra Monti, uh, Professor Patricia Austin, and Madhumita Majumdar and Vasundra Roy. I will try to finish my speech in time. Post colonialism often also involves the discussion of experience such as slavery, migration, compassion, and resistance, difference as gender and peace as well as responses of the discourses of imperial Europe, such as history, philosophy, film, political science, architecture, human geography, sociology, Marxist theory, feminism, anthropology, linguistic, religious, and theological studies and literature. What the first colonial writer did was as important as was the anti-colonial freedom fighters and activities did that the because post-colonial writer challenged some of the basic assumptions like white people are better that had justified colonialism is the first palace in other words the writer better filed was the mind with the freedom fighter Vital fight was well the vital fight. Colonial discourse on the themes, the post colonial writer, as you might guess, is the collection of narrative 
statements and opinions that deals with colonized people told from the perspective of european colonizers of course this discourse is not very kind to colonized peoples given that colonial discourse was important of justifying the whole enterprise and colonialism it became a very important theme for post colonial writers mr jaydeep sarangi has done a great job in collecting this very important and informative essay that show us the history of colonialism throughout the world presentation of col uh, post colonialism in english is a collection of essays edited by jaydeep sarangi beautifully examines how literary theory has a basic aim to place them on the center of where marginalized especially post colonial study which focuses on history and agency of people subordinated under various form imperialism in the preface of editor delinates how gender based discrimination is being taken place and post colonial in cyberspace ever since technology is not feminine by discriminating female cyborg as emotional sexual and often maternal in literature simultaneously he also throughout lives on diasporic space and theoretical construction process to view the map out the space of different cultural models in trans transnational discourses the present collection of essay respects vivid interesting and insightful exploration and textuality and intertextuality of post colonial discourses and its meaning is current critical practice the contributors have explored the subject across different genres throughout both traditional and radical interpretation of colonialism depict in indian english fiction empowering the third world woman indian poetics in this poetic contest disparate poetry and many more along with that is also rising some seminal issues as to how races are linked with nation and how imprisoned space liberates and post colonial actually space in horizontality or event change in discourse it also explores how to language question in post colonial literature is cultural action based upon the stimulus response and individual to their environment at least i also want to point of the mr jaydeep sarangi who give us many books other than his has been awarded with satu award excellence and sufi award of indian english literature for his notable works in field of dalit literature mujhe ye kehne mein bahut fakra mehsoos karta hu ki is event mein aap sab ke sath mujhe judna bahut acha laga main aap sab ka dhanyawad prastut karta hu namaskar dhanyawad thank you sir for your valuable insights it will help all those who are interested in post colonial studies We now come to the last speaker of today's program, Patricia Austin, Faculty, University of Lisbon, Poland. As Professor uh, Sarangi has rightly pointed out, she is an Indian ambassador of Poland. Uh, so the stage is all yours, ma'am. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, and I'm really delighted to be able to join you today uh, from Poland. Um, and when I heard about uh, the publication of this book, I was reminded by uh, of Walter Mignolo's uh, words when he said that um, while colonialism may be over, coloniality, that is the state of being colonized, is all over. And uh, indeed, I believe that uh, no matter in which direction, through what lens we look, uh, it is unavoidable to notice the underside, the underbelly of modernity's quest for pleasure, for uh, salvation, for happiness. Um, 
And uh, unfortunately, the consequences that need to be paid for colonialism are distributed far and wide, but still unequally, um, and uh, have been most painfully felt uh, by those who have um, been hurt the most, but heard the least. Um, and this volume, uh, as I've been uh, reading through the chapters and looking through, uh, through it, uh, gives a proper arena to those who had been variously deprived um, of simply the right to tell the story. Um, and so I was very pleased to see we have uh, chapters devoted to the Aboriginal citizens of Australia, the Dalit uh, in India, uh, the people of Ireland even, Nigeria, Canada, Tibet, uh, and covering all different uh, range of issues, such as education, uh, translation, which we mentioned today, um, uh, the rights for women, which also have been, has been talked about, the Dalits. Uh, but there's also this heightened uh, and very self-reflexive uh, sensitivity to language and the uneasy questions uh, it provokes. And we know that language has always been um, Closely interlinked and associated with identity, so it's um, uh, been a sensitive issue and also a tool of exerting power. But it can also, uh, if it's properly and creatively used, uh, can also be a powerful tool um, of self-expression and a means of spreading the story to the wider audience. And um, when I look at the title of this book, um, a presentations of colonialism in English, uh, new orientations. Uh, I specifically noticed the word presentation, not representations. Um, um, and um, so the authors in this volume, they don't just try to represent the other, to um, uh, speak on behalf of the other, but let, let them speak for themselves. And this voice of the subjugated um, that emerges um, in the most beautiful creative form um, of novels, poetry, uh, witness statements, literary criticism, uh, is really at, very much attuned to the nuances of the stories um, and the ex experience that is presented. Um, and I also had this feeling that um, um, the essays that were collected here um, offer a proper engagement um, um, with that word of the other and uh, and that what is presented here is um, presented with respect for the cultural and personal experience, which can only be a result of proper, attentive listening uh, and genuine care. Um, and that was the beauty uh, of that I found in the book. And um, well, the other pa part of the title, New Orientation, uh, we've all, I mean, there have been already uh, voices talking about it. Uh, Dr. Malash, Malash Lal uh, suggested combining um, um, post-colonialism with feminist studies, which is, of course, a very important um, um, direction to go into and uh, to explore. Um, and um, well, Professor Sherangi himself, in his preface, uh, he talks about cyber uh, technologies and the social media and all the new things that 21st century offers. Um, I will also focus on another um, direction that can be very, very um, powerful when connected with post-colonialism, which is the environmental studies and eco-criticism. Uh, because if we look back at the history of colonialism, we cannot notice how it's always been connected uh, with the exploitation of the natural world uh, and local resources. Um, and uh, the same dynamic simply was present that was present in subjugating the the world of nature um, uh, also present in subjugating the indigenous cultures and people so um i do believe that combining the forces of the two fields may strengthen this um, struggle for environmentally healthy and sound future um, um in which hopefully the hierarchies, the dichotomies produced and circulated by modernity will be a story of the past. Um, and honestly, I've been doing a lot of reading uh, recently on Heidegger and more Merleau-Ponty. Um, and well, uh, if we look at Western, I'm from the Western world. So if we look at our um, thought and philosophy since uh, Descartes, uh, cogito, Descartes' cogito, uh, there has been a very, very strict hierarchy of beings um, and, well, with the human on the top and the rest 
very far below, uh, and that only began to be changed with Heidegger in the 21st century, who recognized that every being has a design, even if they are not able to recognize it, but there is um, something that links everyone. Uh, but he still couldn't admit that this other, non-human other, can have a language, and that that's what stopped him. And then we have Merleau-Ponty, who says, well, well, maybe the other can speak through the body, so he, he focused on the corporeality of the other uh, uh, in this way. And um, But they still both stopped at some moment where I think India has already been uh, much further, further, much further uh, in much earlier uh, in the past. So that's something, um, and, and also post-colonial uh, theory and criticism has done much more powerfully. So that's why I believe the ability to give the voice to um, other people, to women, uh, to the uh, subjugated, and also to the non-human nature is the next step forward. And that will allow uh, us to live possibly um, in a greater harmony, communion, symbiosis with one another in a better future. And I, I also, reading this volume, looking at it, I, I saw that there, there are many, many um, intelligent uh, people uh, willing to devote their time to and their work uh, to to create and to spread the good word and to create that future that we will all want to live in. Uh, and my big congratulations to JD Sharangi for collecting those people here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. That was wonderful deliberation. Loved your comments, your observations, and your inputs about the book. And I would request all of you to grab a copy and go through it. Uh, all good things come to an end. We come to the end of the program. May I now request my co-moderator, Dr. Madhu Peter Majukdar, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you so much. It is my absolute honor to be doing this, to be giving the vote of thanks and being in this august company. Uh, I would begin by uh, thanking the publisher, Sudarshan Ketriji, for you know, bringing out or helping to bring out this wonderful book. Uh, Professor Fakru Lalam, Professor Malushi Lal, Professor uh, Asendro Monti, who couldn't be there, but, you know, was represented. Professor Rajesh Makwana, Professor Patriaka Astin, all of them, you know, rightly pointed out that post-colonialism is, is perhaps, you know, just not about a theory. It's not about, you know, uh, uh, to be restricted in certain uh, spaces. You know, you've got to explore the diaspora. We, we also talked about, you know, uh, uh, migration, but we talked about inter-migration, as Madhashri, Madam, pointed out, you know, and, uh, you know, we came up with all these, you know, uh, directions that this book could lead us to. One of the most beautiful aspects of this particular uh, 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 virtual uh, space was, you know, when Shutopa was singing or rendering her song uh, of Tagore, I saw uh, Professor Patricia Ashton, you know, really enjoying the even the Bengali version of it. You know, that is what I believe is, you know, coming together of, you know, things in this very virtual uh, world. And uh, uh, of course, uh, thanking Boshudhara Roy, who has been there, you know, as a quite support, you know, helping this wonderful program to be, you know, in, in its in this state. And of course, the day, of course, belongs to the editor, Jayadeep Sharangi, who, of course, could, you know, bring together, stimulate us, as, you know, rightly pointed out by Fakrul Alam Sir and Malushri Alal, and also by Rajesh Makwana, that, and, and also as uh, uh, Professor Patriasha said, that this could be, you know, a part of a continued journey. A journey has been begun, you know, and we hope that this continues and we could be, uh, you know, part of more such journeys. For us, the moderator, Shutunakana, and myself, it has been an absolute pleasure being here from our part of the world. It is a namaste. Stay well, stay safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madhumita, and thank you, Shutanuka, for uh, taking the burden of uh, uh, conducting the program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fakrulda. Thank you, Malusradi. Thank you, Rajeshji.